The Afghanistan debacle should remind us of what authentic leadership looks like. That's the headline of a recent column at CarolinaJournal.com from Ray Nothstein. He is opinion editor of Carolina Journal. And you look at uh, the, what we've seen in the news from Afghanistan and say this really tells us a message about leadership in America. Yeah, it really should. I just, the you know, obviously that came out put some of the blame, a large part of the blame on our president, Joe Biden, for allowing this to happen, uh, whether, you know, whoever he wants to blame in the past. But I do think it posits an important lesson because there was just such a broader collapse that just doesn't start or end with Joe Biden. It, it has to do with the Joint Chiefs, our intelligence community, uh, Congress. Uh, here in North Carolina, we had Walter Jones, who pushed uh, for a decade at least. The late congressman pushed for a debate and a definition of the mission in Afghanistan. And I think this whole kind of chaotic turmoil that we're seeing in um, American withdrawal in such a ugly and brutal manner just posits that the lack of leadership in this nation right now. And that uh, I think filters out to the culture too as well. One thing you note is that President Biden says the buck stops with me, but then continues to place blame on other people. And then you follow that up by saying the quality of ownership is anathema to so many in politics. Uh, tell us what you meant about that. Right. He was trying to channel, of course, Harry Truman, who was famous for saying the buck stops with me, the buck stop, this buck stops here. And so, uh, you know, he didn't really embody that at all. He just went on the blame game. And I think it's important. There are moments when uh, political leaders, presidents have to step up and lead. And let's uh, you know, a lot of uh, viewers may not be big fans of Jimmy Carter, but there was a moment after uh, Tehran that he blamed himself. He, he really took onus over the situation when he tried to rescue the hostages. He said all the blame's on me. He didn't make excuses. Now, he paid a price politically. He was probably going to pay a price anyways, but uh, he took ownership over that situation. And we see a lot more of the opposite today where we see just more spin. And part of that's part of the game, obviously, but there, there has to be times when presidents step up and take real ownership and, and not deflect blame. Speaking of ownership, uh, a large segment of your column deals with a, a figure from uh, recent U.S. politics who also had a larger story, and that is Admiral James Stockdale. Why does he fit in with this theme? Well, he's written several books on leadership. He's a Medal of Honor recipient. He was tortured by the North Vietnamese terribly uh, during the conflict. He was shot down. I think it was an A-6 intruder. His, his plane was shot down. And he was tortured, and they were used. These uh, pilots were used as propaganda uh, against America during the war. And so Stockdale was a leader of the underground communication. He was a senior officer there, but he's also the leader, one of the leaders in the TAP code and communicating in the prison. And I bring up Stockdale because he is just this great. Uh, he's just this amazing man who really to try to stop the prisoners from being tortured he would disfigure himself because they would try to film these prisoners and use them for propaganda purposes he tried to basically kill himself because the torture got so bad that he needed to try something to stop what was going on and i think stockdale just you know he had this one foray into politics where he failed uh he was uh, vice president i mean he was the vice presidential pick for ross perot in 1992 and he was in the debate didn't do real well. A lot of people laughed at him and stuff. But I was just trying to make a point that here's this guy that failed in politics. Very smart man, by the way. I mean, he wrote uh, enormous books, was a, f a senior fellow at the Hoover Institution, did a lot of great things. But he had this failure in politics. I tried to like just do some comparisons with him and sort of the lack of political leadership we have today. And I, I think uh, I draw that a little out a little bit and just sort of the model of leadership that maybe comes out of our, some of our academies that's very servant-oriented that we don't have today with a lot of the political class. And part of your column also strikes a little close to home. You talked about the lessons that you learned from your own dad. Right. I mean, in his retirement ceremony, he he paid tribute to the people that he learned from. And one of the things I really appreciated him, he was part of the – the Dalians, which is a flying um, group in Mississippi. And there were a lot of veterans involved in it. I think that's what it was for. It's just uh, paying attention and paying tribute to veterans. And he paid a tribute to the, the men who flew missions over Europe, the 8th Air Force, at his own retirement ceremony. And I just, you know, you learn from that. You learn that these, these giants that came before you that sacrificed more than you do. I mean, you know, in this time today, we are often criticizing history or indicting 
uh, so much of our own history, but there's these big giants that came from before us. And I think it's important to, to uh, you know, let people know and be humble that there are people that sacrificed more than you did. And I think that's an important lesson to learn in terms of leadership and humility and leading people is that to know that there are people that are better than you. There are people that have done more than you have done and you should learn from them and you should pay tribute to them and and their legacy. Speaking of that, you mentioned that America has an exceptional heritage of leadership, but we might not know that if we don't know our history. That's exactly right. At the end, I, I kind of close with George Washington, who not only gave up power once, but gave up power twice. He set this great precedent in America of serving two terms, which wasn't broken until uh, uh, FDR. So, um, of course, I just think that's an amazing kind of testament. I always thought, think Washington is the best president because he does set that precedent of giving up power. And um, he was really the right man, obviously, for the job. And any, But anytime someone says he's not the greatest president, it always kind of wrinkles me the wrong way because just uh, just what he did for America and set it up. I mean, even King George, uh, I think there was a painter who was painting him and he was talking about Washington. And he said, you know, he says, Washington, uh, after, the, after they had defeated the British, he goes, he has gone back to his farm. And, and of course, he says, you know, if, if that's actually true, then he really is the greatest man. And, and this whole idea of Cincinnati and, and giving up power was very uh, pronounced among the founders. And it's something I think we need to relearn here today. Well, I think you will enjoy reading more about this at carolinajournal.com. Find the column with the headline, Afghanistan Debacle Should Remind Us of What Authentic Leadership Looks Like. Its author is Ray Nothstein. He is opinion editor at Carolina Journal. Thanks so much. Thank you.